So using this respiratory approach, what are kind of our long-term outcomes? Um, so this is a, a, a brilliant paper. Here's Dr. Bell. Uh, you know, this is the, uh, the Iowa team. And this is looking at outcomes at 18 to 22 months of corrected age. So many of these babies chronologically were 24 to 26 months. At and these are babies born at 22 to 25 weeks. But let's just look at the 22 and 23 weekers in this paper. And this was in general pediatrics. Um, there were 70 extremely premature infants at 22 to 23 weeks in this cohort. And obviously in order to see them after a couple of years of life, we had to you know, go back in time. And we treated them all with first intention high frequency. This was long enough ago that infant star still existed. That was another high frequency ventilator. Again, the concept is minimizing value trauma. And the majority were on the, the jet ventilator, again, with the concept to minimize value trauma. The survival in this cohort was quite amazing at that time. And that's why you don't want to be, always be fooled by smaller numbers, 70% at 22, 82% at 23. These have since, as we've increased the cohort, they've come down a little bit because Iowa now is becoming a referral center for the whole state. So many times they're getting sent to us uh, women who've ruptured their membranes before 20 weeks. Um, so they potentially have a very high risk of severe pulmonary hypoplasia. So as we're getting more, the survival has come down a little bit. So it, right now it's 63% um, at 22 weeks, still incredibly high. Uh, obviously they all got surfactant. The other fascinating thing is that our 22 weekers are initially intubated with a 2-0-ET tube, 93% of the 22 weekers. And we did 41% of the 23 weekers with a 2-0-ET tube. Um, this is important because we know the most narrow part of the trachea is subglottic. And so what often happens if you're trying to force a 2-5 into a 22-weeker, the team's like, I can see it. I don't know why it's going in. I don't know why it's not going in. I think I'm at the cords. And the whole reason is, you know, a millimeter below the cords, it's reading, it's meeting obstruction because that's the narrowest point, which is why chronically intubated babies are at risk of subglottic stenosis and need for tracheostomy. So we'll start with the 2-OET tube um, as, after a certain number of weeks. Um, we will eventually transition to a 2-5 tube once they're bigger, usually around 550, 600 grams, we think about it. And the jet ventilator has had zero problems for us ventilating through that 2 tube. Now, the median duration of ventilation uh, for this population is 63 days. So basically, um, we know that um, within nine weeks, half of these babies are actually off the ventilator. And, and if you th again, think about it as post-menstrual age. So the post-menstrual age they're coming off is between, is basically at 63 days is 31 weeks. So 31 weeks post-menstrual age, half of these babies are now um, off the ventilator. Now, what I consider severe BPD is you wanna you know, go with Eric Jensen at, uh, at University of Pennsylvania, Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania, their brilliant work on what, what is the real BPD, and that's this grading system. And grade three BPD means you're still on an invasive ventilator 36 weeks post-menstrual age. And if you're still on a ventilator 36 weeks post-menstrual age, this increases the risk of poor neurodevelopment outcome. So this is really the big marker, not oxygen at 36 weeks. And only 6% of this incredibly tiny group is still needing the ventilator and only one required a tracheostomy in this group.